Hi friends, my name is Tris, and this is No Boilerplate, where I make fast, technical videos. Every single day I write electronic music, podcasts, and videos, all produced on Linux, using mostly free open source software on whatever cheap hardware is within reach. Today I'm going to tell you about my whole creative process, and even a little on how I got here, as it explains why and how I'm doing all of this in the first place, and allows me to make some recommendations. My video scripts are dedicated to the public domain. Everything you see here, script, links, and images, are part of a Markdown document available freely on GitHub at the above address. Before I was a YouTuber, I was a programmer, and I promise this is relevant. I was set on my path to this profession at age 16 by my father. I asked him at the time if I should be a teacher, like him, or be a programmer. And he told me, if you are a programmer, you'll be able to teach in your spare time. But if you are a teacher, you'll never have any spare time ever again. Very smart, though sad, advice. But now look at me, teaching on YouTube just as he predicted. Recommendation 1. Specialisation is for insects. I distinctly remember about five years into my working life in London that I was sitting in my bedroom one evening feeling this vague sense of mounting guilt. I realised that it was because I wasn't studying to be a better programmer in my spare time, honing my craft. I was, in fact, composing music and playing games in my spare time, when all the information around me, online, on YouTube, in blog posts, was about how only specialists win. I had internalised this opinion, and like a flash that I can remember clearly today, I realised that this opinion was not mine. I could be a generalist. I loved being a generalist. I didn't need to be productive. I needed to be happy. So, perhaps not as quickly as I could have if I spent every evening studying, over 15 years I became an expert web developer as part of my job. But I also pushed myself to jump at any public speaking I could do, thinking vaguely that it was a weakness of mine and it might come in handy one day. By 2017 I had practiced enough in internal presentations to start to branch out into programming conferences like here at Closer Exchange in London. In my final year of working in the programming minds at my day job, I wanted to demo to my team this incredible new language I'd learned about called Rust. Perhaps you've heard of it. A few of my colleagues couldn't make it at the time I ran my 10 minute presentation, so I recorded it for them and uploaded it here on YouTube. All was quiet for a few weeks, then one sleepy Sunday my email stopped loading. i had had over a thousand comments overnight as the video had gone viral and my life was to change forever. In hindsight, I think my interest in performing music set me up with many of the skills I would need for creative success, especially here on YouTube. I've been a musician my whole life. Starting when I was a child, I had lessons on first trumpet, then piano. After being fired by my piano teacher at age 16 for not practicing enough, I found a jazz piano teacher in my town and have loved performing jazz and blues and rock music ever since. By publishing music, a few Bandcamp albums here and there, and eventually some YouTube videos here and there, I was able to slowly practice not just the technical music performance, but the production process. I was practicing levelling audio and learning about video encoding quality and how to publish a website, all good meta skills that are useful quite aside from the act of performing. I think anyone who wants to be creative should practice performing something in front of others. It could be giving a presentation, or playing music in front of an audience, like I did, or perhaps acting on a stage, or reciting poetry, or anything else. The important thing is that with any of these performances you'll learn, as I did, that one, it's not a scary thing to do, stage fright for me was just lack of practice, but more importantly two, it will force you to consider your performance through the eyes and expectations of others. Especially if you watch or listen to footage of yourself performing with a critical eye or ear. Thinking about this regularly will allow you to improve. Performing is all very well, but you must have something to say. Ever since discovering The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books as a boy, I have wanted to be a writer. I wrote here and there for my blog, Oatman.com, but nothing regular. I tried NaNoWriMo every year, even once finishing that month-long 50,000 word challenge. Nothing came of that book directly. But I did learn how to create a daily writing habit, vital in any field. It was not until 2020, listening to Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner's podcast Start With This, that I realised I didn't need to write a book, I could write a podcast. I lasted five episodes of Start With This before I had to stop listening and start writing the pilot of what would become my first fiction podcast, Lost Terminal. I produced it in a fever dream over the course of a few evenings, got my partner to read the credits and to promise that Lost Terminal will return next week. After that public commitment, 
There was no going back, I'm writing season 17 now. I was able to do this all because I had accidentally become really good at every skill I needed to make a fiction podcast. If you want me to teach you them personally, that is possible through my Patreon, because I'm offering a limited number of mentoring slots. If you'd like one-to-one -one tuition on Rust, personal organisation, creative production, web tech, or anything that I talk about in my videos, do sign up and let's chat. I offer other tiers too, you can see and give feedback on my videos up to a week early, as well as get Discord perks, and even your name in the credits. It's just me running this channel, and I'm so grateful for everyone for supporting me on this wild adventure. In Adam Savage's autobiography and generalist manifesto, every tool's a hammer, he repeats advice given to comedian Steve Martin. You will eventually use everything you've ever learned. I think about this quote constantly. Every annoying task that seems like it's not part of what you want to do is actually part of the project, and you can make it better and yourself better by learning it. For example, if you're an author, you might be tempted to hire someone else to make your book's cover artwork. If you're a musician, you might pay for a studio engineer to master your recorded song. And, close to my heart, if you're a YouTuber, it's extremely common to hire an editor to put together your videos. All these things that you're paying for someone else to do, you're paying for someone else to learn or improve those skills instead of you. You're so sure that you're not going to need those skills in the future. It's cheaper to learn them for yourself, it's better to learn them for yourself. Start, as I did, with what you know. I started out writing Lost Terminal in a programming editor I was already using for my day job, Emacs Org Mode, a delightfully nerdy and powerful system for building an interconnected knowledge platform. However, after a year, I discovered Obsidian, thanks to CGP Grey and Mike Hurley's productivity-focused podcast, Cortex. Obsidian is a markdown-based, note-taking, knowledge management, everything app, and I was hooked from the start. My most popular video, at time of recording, is an intro to Obsidian. Obsidian is incredible. I made the presentation you're looking at right now using its advanced slides plugin. Conclusion. Thanks to my standardization on Linux and mostly open source tools, I am not held back by my hardware or software. I could do all my coding and production on a Raspberry Pi powered by a solar panel. The only reason I would like to change my setup is for ergonomic reasons. Digital minimalism is weird. It kind of requires you to normalize your smartphone's home screen applications into an EDC bag of separate physical devices. A camera, a dictaphone, an e-ink note-taking tablet, a digital typewriter, I guess, even an actual TV. Remember those? I'm always trying to find a balance between the convenient compromises of a smartphone and carrying around a load of better but bulkier alternatives. Like everyone, I dream of space. Wrangling my audio recording sessions in the same room that my wife is in sprint planning meetings is a challenge. I'd love an office with four walls painted different colours, with four identical machines set up for my different modes of writing, editing, research and production. Maybe for the last one I'd build a machine with a Threadripper CPU so video exports and Rust compilation can go burr. I've made many recommendations in this video, but they're just tools to allow me to make what I love, and I love nearly everything I learn about. There appears to be no subject that if you don't explain it well enough isn't fascinating. Being an artist, writer, creator for me is not optional. I want to learn more about the world, and the best way to learn something, anything, is to write about it for yourself, and better than that, to try to explain it to others too. Thank you. If you would like to support my channel, get early ad-free and tracking-free videos, your name in the credits, or one-to-one -one mentoring, head to my Patreon or Ko-fi. If you're interested in transhumanism and hope punk, please check out my weekly sci-fi audio fiction podcast, Lost Terminal. Or if urban fantasy is more your bag, do listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce every full moon called Modem Prometheus. Transcripts and compile-checked markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the pinned errata comment. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you on Discord.